What's up, everybody? Bradley with the Insurance Guys Podcast here. Before we get started with this episode, I want to talk to you about this week's sponsor. If you pay any attention to the Independent Agency channel, you know there's no hotter buzzword right now than VAs or virtual assistants. This week's sponsor, I'm proud to say, is CoverDesk, who offers an innovative client solution for agencies to outsource client-facing VAs. Created by agency veteran Andy Priesman, owner of Greenway Insurance. People, this is not your typical VA company. They offer a proven system of recruiting highly educated virtual assistants, ensuring consistent performance for your agency. With their experience, they're able to help you design a program that is just right for you and your agency. They implement by onboarding and training each VA in foundational insurance skills. Visit CoverDesk on the web at www.coverdesk.com or email them at hello at coverdesk.com or you can call them and tell them that the insurance guys sent you. Please do at 512-879-3345. Guys, give CoverDesk a ring. I promise you, you will not regret it. Insurance agents from around the world, welcome to the Insurance Guys podcast. My name is Scott Howell, your fearless host and leader insurance agency owner and insurance evangelist for I protect insurance and financial services based out of Huntsville, Alabama. And before we get started on today's episode, please help me welcome, he is a six foot three sophomore from Sarah Land, Alabama, parade first team All-American, playboy first team All-American, rivals five-star recruit. Ladies and gentlemen, he is a fantastic insurance agent, a great American, and the agency owner of Portal Insurance here in Mobile, Alabama. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and welcome the incomparable Mr. Bradley Flowers. How are you, Bradley? I'm great, Scott. How are you today? This is my favorite podcast that we ever do. And I will be honest with you, Bradley. These are the podcasts that I get the most comments, texts, DMs about is when Scott and Bradley sit in here by ourselves Get a cup of hot chocolate and sit here and just... Cup of tea. Cup of tea. Cheers, mate. Is Scott there? Can I speak to Scott? Those were the days when I lived in London, girls calling post six. Can I speak to Scott? Yeah, he's supposed to be at my flat. He's supposed to be at my flat at 7 p.m. and it's 8.30. That's Why? true, too, isn't yeah. it? I don't know. Oh, some kid from Texas. I don't know where the hell Howell's at. Hold on a second. Hey, Howell, you here? No, anyway, that's previous life, folks. Previous life. Live 14 of them. Do it yourself. Live 14 lives. Anyway, today's podcast is very special to me. It's very special to Bradley. This was something that we promised and we are delivering on. I have a bracelet on that says, because I said I would. And what we told our audience, our demographic, our people that send us comments, text messages is we were going to walk them through the process of Bradley Flowers becoming an independent insurance agent, going from employee agent to independent agent. I am so proud of you. I'm so uh, excited for you. And I think this process has been, there's been obviously some good. There's been pains. There's been times when you called me and I thought I was going to have to drive down to Mobile and like give you a, a sedative because you're about to flip a desk over and kill somebody. But today's podcast, guys, we're going to, Bradley and I are going to talk a little bit about his transition to independent agency. Kind of going back, I always talk about getting in your DeLorean. I mm-hmm. think for you today, <laughs> what I'd like for you to do for me is get in your DeLorean and go back to the date of reckoning, March the 1st, 2019, when we opened up our independent agency. And actually, let's go back a little bit before that, because the January, February time frame, you were getting everything ready to go. More February, but yeah. Oh, man, you had so much going on, Mm -hmm. dude. And you're calling me because things aren't just bop, bop, bop in line, you know. And uh, let's talk a little bit about that transition and talk about things you've learned, the differences between being an employee agent with a captive carrier versus being an independent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And, and, and so, you know, obviously opening a new business, let alone a scratch insurance agency, you expect everything to go wrong. You know, for me... It was a little bit delayed, you know, for the most part. Things, for the, for the most part, were going right, you know. And, and in the grand scheme of things, short of somebody dying, no matter how wrong they go in, in the, the 85 years of your life, are you even going to remember it's those g- things? You it's know? good. <laughs> well, well, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And so it's... I think I even you know, said that to you one day. I said, hey, you know what Mike Stromso says, don't you? And you, Because you were just like freaking yeah. fired up. And I said, did anybody die? 
Yeah. And if they didn't, we can fix it. We can make it right. That's exactly right. And so, you know, I quit my agency uh, January the 8th. I'll kind of give a rundown. DeLorean. Everybody that's ever tried to go independent knows how difficult, at least how per, the perception is of the difficulty of getting carrier appointments. Mm-hmm. And with me, you know, I'm trying to do it the hard way. Mm-hmm. I'm not going cluster route, right. uh, the aggregator route, which nothing wrong with that at all. No. Um, of, just for me. Hell, I was, to, a lot of people have to do it. Right. And, yeah. and just honestly, for me, you know, had I not built some of the great relationships I've built from this podcast, I probably would have had to do it mm-hmm. as well. Did you really rely on them or did you rely more on your marketing people? Like, and, I, and let's just be cold water here. Did you like... Like make phone calls to agents that you have relationships so, with, or was uh, it more so, somewhat, somewhat, yeah. You know, you have to get people to vouch for you. I mean, I've got the carrier contract right now, a big one that I had a podcast listener vouch for me. Yeah, but anyway, it, without me asking, mm. we were just talking like, man, you know, I'd really like to have this contract. Let me let me send an email. This person happens to write a lot of business with sure with that, you know. So not just the people we've had on, but the the listeners too. But you know, if somebody would ask me, "Hey Bradley, what's the best way to start an independent agency?" I'd say start a podcast first. <laughs> exactly. In fact, I've heard you say that. Yeah. So my thing is like I was going to try to do it without the cluster. I was going to mm-hmm. try to do it direct. Uh, that way, I could always go back to that. You know, I have friends that run very, very, very good clusters. Nothing wrong with that at all. That's just I didn't want to try to do it that way. And also, I'm coastal, so I'm I'm hyper. You know, the, the carriers are hyper localized. There's a lot of carrier. Most of the, the top carriers that I write, you, a lot of you guys listening have never heard of, mm-hmm. and they're good carriers. They just it's it's not that they're not good carriers. They just write coastal exactly. And, and sometimes those contracts are a little easier to get. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they're a little harder. And a lot of clusters don't carry those. My previous employer, I had a appointment with the state wind pool, mm-hmm. which is a state owned insurance company that I actually own that business, so I could take it with me. And part of their requirements is you have to have E&O insurance and you have to have, I don't even know if Scott knows the story, uh, you have to have E&O insurance and you have to be appointed with one admitted carrier. Mm-hmm. I talked to zero carrier reps prior to me uh, leaving my previous agency. Was that a mistake? No, it wasn't because I felt like that's the right thing to do. Like yeah. I, I didn't want to. I didn't want muddy to, the water. Oh yeah, yeah. I just it just felt like that was not the right thing to do. Plus, plus to, you talk to a carrier rep, and then they know somebody, and exactly. Next thing well, you know and it gets around. But right. then also, you know, we we brokered a lot of business. So I already knew a lot of the carrier reps, and mm-hmm. I and it, it just it would really have been a conflict of interest. But anyway, I know I have to have one appointment to keep this mm-hmm. contract. But I'm thinking, okay, they've got to have like a grace period, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And so I quit my job. Uh, literally, the first call I make is to this carrier. Mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, I just left. I'm taking it with me. I, I need to know mm-hmm. what, what I have to do to, to fulfill your requirements on mm-hmm. your end. And they said, well, you got to have E&O insurance. I said, I just bought E&O insurance. Mm-hmm. I bought E&O, E&O insurance that morning. Right. Just bought E&O insurance. If you've ever tried to buy E&O insurance as a brand new agency, you need to call me first. Anyway, mm-hmm. but it's incredibly difficult. Okay. Can you tell the listeners who you got? I'd through? rather not say. Okay. And they said, and you have to have one admitted appointment. Mm-hmm. And you guys know this. Anybody that's ever ran an independent agency, like a week is the is fast getting appointed from right. from contact mm-hmm. to logins. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. not fast. Mm-hmm. At the fastest, it's a week. I mm-hmm. mean, that's super, super fast. Super fast. Yeah. And I'm like, so how long do you guys give me to to get a, another carrier appointment? And they said, oh, we want it today. And I'm like, you want it today? <laughs> like, you have to have you it today, t- today, or, today, or you're going to lose quite a large book of business. Damn. And I said, and I, and so this was a Tuesday. Uh, you never have told me this story. Uh, I talked them into giving me until Friday. Did you? Which get, is still freaking ridiculous. Three days. Did you hang up and get in the fetal position in the? Field? No, no. I, I took it in stride because, like I said, I was expecting everything to go wrong. So, so know? wait a minute. I want to explain this to the podcast listeners because there's been a little bit of misinformation here. So. I was a scratch agent with Nationwide in July third, two thousand ten, my first day of work. I had no book of business and I was on a program, but my income was being supplemented because on that particular program with Nationwide, you made a salary. Mm-hmm. And then for every single policy you sold for a period of 24 months, which was seemed like 462 months, it didn't matter how big the policy was, you got 75 bucks policy, right? If you sold a $100 renter's policy, you made $75. If you sold a $12,000 poultry farm, you got $75. But then in April, May of 2012, a book of business opened up, and I ended up having my $350,000 book of business that I had built mm-hmm. plus another 800000 coming in 
from that book when I started. So it was my book of business when I opened my front doors was probably a little less than a million dollars, right at a million dollars. And for you, and I know there's been some misinformation, uh, people have asked me, and you, I've heard you say, scratch, scratch, scratch. But when you're talking about losing that book of business, and the reason I brought that up is you had two sources of, one, you had a brokered book of business that you were allowed to mm-hmm. take with you. And that's what you're talking about right now. Essentially, yeah. Yeah. Is, yeah. is that brokered mm-hmm. book of business? Do you care to elaborate on what how much that was? Or? Um, it was enough that if I didn't get to take it, I would have been pissed off for a, a, so yeah, for, for pretty, a long while, but it, would, it wouldn't have stopped me from opening. Right. And, 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 and a matter of fact, a lot of it's been BOR'd back, and that's fine. What I want to do on this podcast, and I hope I'm not overstepping my bounds, Mm-mm. the reason I'm doing what I'm doing, and that is complete and open 1,000% yeah. transparency to these guys yeah. and girls, is we get so many people that ask us about, you know, I'm here, I want to go independent. You know, I, I want to go this morning. Two days ago, a guy said, what was it? He was talking about borrowing money to start an yeah. independent agency. Yeah. So I would like to, and I guess the thing I don't know about you, and this is probably something that we should have talked about before mm-hmm. we got on the podcast. Mm-hmm. I'm a complete thousand percent. I will go print out my damn current DWP for the entire year and stick it up to the phone and let you see where I'm at. You seem to be a little more reserved about what you're willing to talk about on the podcast relative to sharing information with the podcast listeners. No, I just think that exact figures are are not not necessarily. Why Why do you feel that way? Um, okay, but you would agree that you're a little more conservative. Yeah, absolutely, in your conversation. absolutely, absolutely. So, so the, re- um, the, and and the reason it, I say that from a competitive standpoint, because I know some of my direct competitors listen to this, so okay. I don't know. You know what I mean? It's close enough to be in scratch. It's, right. it's a small book. It's enough that I notice it. You are, are, you, are you willing to talk about other transactions that you are have just completed? Yeah, we can talk to, about that. I don't want time. anybody to get the impression that you and I, either one, went out with three hundred dollars in our checking account, right? With, with, I see you know, what you're saying. Yeah, yeah scratch yeah, yeah, agency yeah, yeah. with no, no policies. No, I see what that, you're that's just not true. It's I see just what not you're true. saying. Yes, I, and and you are absolutely right. So I am currently in the process. It should actually be done this week. Uh, buying a book of business from a retiring agent. Right. That book is about the same size as the one I got to keep. Right. If that kind of gives you context, I'm still not starting with a lot. Right. But for myself, you know, I mean, it's something that you have to plan. You know, you can't just you know, I saw where Taylor Dobby posted on Facebook that he had an agent that reached out and said, hey, man, I'm interested in going independent. And Taylor's like, okay, man, well, when are you looking to make the change? And he's like, uh, tomorrow. <laughs> like, it doesn't work that way. Right, like, you, right. this, you have this, you're opening a business. You're not running this right. out of your, you know, you're not starting an internet business. Right. You know what I mean? You're you're running this, it's an, it's an agency. It's it's a real thing. Right. Uh, even if you are doing the whole work from home thing, that's fine. You know, for me, um, I had to, I had a sp- a specified amount of money I had to have in the bank when I started. I got it. The book that I'm buying, you know, the the residuals off of that is going to help tremendously. Because the other thing that I'm trying to do is I'm actually, it seems like 99% of independent agents when they start, start as a one-man show, which is great, fine, I respect that. My life would be a whole lot easier right now if I was doing that, believe it or not. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to do two things. I'm trying to hire people so I can scale it fast. I'm trying to hire commission only producers. I'm trying to find myself five years ago. I'm trying to find people who are, and if, and if you guys know anyone in Alabama, send them my way, but I'm trying to find people who are going to essentially be independent contractors with my agency who want to open their own independent agency down the road. And I'm going to help them do that. And I'm not going to talk specific figures on the podcast as far as how that deal would look, but I will tell you this, it is the most generous deal anybody's going to get with anybody and and if you remember that what you're wanting to do i came to you you did you did uh, over a year and a half ago and said and said exactly the same thing trying to get bradley to come in with my Mm -hmm. agency us open an office in mobile sarah land and basically do exactly because Mm -hmm. this has been my game plan for five six seven years and if you'd have hit me a year and a half earlier, I'd have probably jumped all over right. it. But I was at that point where I was like, I'm too far along right. to not try to do it myself. But but back you know, back to the story, they gave they give me three days. Mm-hmm. I negotiated the three days, right. which is still ridiculous, to get this appointment. Mm-hmm. Otherwise I'm gonna lose a substantial amount of business. And never, never heard this story. And so I called the first carrier rep 
that, that, I, that I had planned to call and <laughs> explain the situation and said, I've got to get this done. Right. Right now. Like, it's yeah, got to be done. And by God, if we didn't get it done by that day. And so that was, that was kind of the first thing, you know. And then, you know, we had my office that I rented was literally half of the rent of what I'd planned in my business plan, which was great because that essentially pretty much almost afforded me to hire at least one more producer. I text the, the landlord after looking at the office. I text her and I say, hey, I want that office. She doesn't see that text, leases it to somebody else out from under me who defaulted on the lease. Then, so thankfully, because of that, we, she was able to offer me the space next door, which was much bigger, very similar to Container Yard, where we record this this podcast, kind of an industrial, I, I love the look of my office. So I'm like, okay, this is a month before opening. I'm like, okay, great, sign the lease. I don't have the keys today. I, I'll get them to you tomorrow. Landlord doesn't get me the keys. Uh, she's off in Puerto Rico or somewhere. So I got delayed getting the, the keys to my office uh, three weeks because when they got back, there was something they were storing in there they had to get out. So I'm I'm just now, as we speak, finishing my office. Um, I used uh, a company, a phone company that everybody knows, which I'm not going to name, for my, uh, my phones. The way they work is they sell you the service, and then the technician calls you. They don't send somebody out to you. Technician calls you. Technician calls you to install it. The technician calls me. I've got no Ethernet plugs to, to plug the phones into. I'm like, I've never set phones up like this, right? So back up, I'm, I'm using the Cisco phones, those ones that everybody has. I find these Cisco phones on Amazon for $8. It was more to rent the phones from my phone company per month than what I paid for these phones. So I'm like, heck yeah. I'm, everything I was doing, my business plan wise, was less than what I'd planned, which is Great. And so I buy these phones. So I get I finally uh, the phone company's like, OK, uh, the soonest the technician can call you is next week. So I'm like, so next week comes by. We're trying to set the phones up. Oh, you don't have any phone cord. You don't have any uh, jacks, any Ethernet jacks. So I paid somebody to install Ethernet jacks in my office. Turns out I didn't need the Ethernet jacks. We can just plug them directly into the computer because the computer's connected to Wi-Fi. That technician didn't know what they're talking about. Well, then, so we get to setting the phones up. We set the phones up. There's no power cord to these $8 phones I ordered off Amazon. So then I have to order power cords for $14 each, almost double what the phones cost. Order the power cords. Another week goes by. We get on with this technician. Nope. Phone won't work. Phone will not configure to that particular service. And the reason I'm using this particular service, I'm using it, it integrates with my management system, which is now certs. Now certs has been probably the best decision I've made as far as from a technology standpoint is it integrates with everything. Finally, I just told the phone company, I'm like, just send me phones. I'll pay you $8 a month per phone, which it actually discounted my bill about that. So I'm paying the same other than I'm locked into a two-year contract now. So literally the first day we opened, we didn't have phones. So my office is open concept, but I had to build me out an office mm-hmm. in there. You know, I have to have sensitive conversations with customers mm-hmm. and employees. So we do that. And you did that yourself. Me and my dad did that. Yeah. That got delayed a little bit mm-hmm. because the building department for the city of Sarah Land took their time on coming and signing off on it. The business license, we, we didn't do the sheetrock. That's the only thing we haven't done. So we get somebody to hang the drywall. And it had been a while since I'd been around new construction. Mm-hmm. But I showed up at my office Monday morning after he did that sheetrock. And literally the entire office was caked, Mm -hmm. coated Mm -hmm. in sheetrock dust. And it's still there to this day. I mop Mm -hmm. it every afternoon when Mm -hmm. I get done. People think entrepreneurship is glamorous. You want to see what entrepreneurship looks like? Come to my office at 545 in the afternoon, and I'm mopping it with a Swiffer. Right. So It's a 2,400-square-foot office with concrete floors, painted concrete floors. So then that happened. I had a carrier rep. So I reached out to this. So guys, one of the one of the, the rules my dad taught me in business is you don't burn bridges in business. Mm. And sometimes the, I'm guilty of doing the, that. This, this is a great story. Sometimes I'm guilty of doing that. And so, but anyway, so I reached out to this one carrier rep for this carrier who was introduced to me by somebody else. That first carrier rep that gave me that appointment inter- introduced me to everybody else pretty much. I call him and apparently this guy and I had gotten into an argument on social media like three years ago, mm-hmm. and he brings it up. Mm. 
and is like, is this Bradley Flowers, the person that told me, da, 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 da? Told, told me to kiss his ass. <laughs> no, it wasn't that bad. But it was, and what it was is this person sent me, I think he listens to the podcast, so that's why I'm keeping everything to my, mm-hmm, to, right. to my chest. He sent me a message by mistake that was mistakenly sent for somebody else. I responded in a sarcastic manner, not right. being a dick, but just yeah. that was taken the wrong way because there's no context through text. And you there's have no, been accused of that before. Been, been we've, snarky we've, before, we, yeah. Well, we've talked on the podcast. Yeah. like, And it's not even being snarky. It's just... I, Matter I, of I, fact. Yeah, and just uh, maybe the way that you say something is misinterpreted yeah. as some yeah. other way, which is very easy to do yeah. in a comment, you mm-hmm. know? And I'm like, oh, no. And, and so that that happened. Uh, thankfully, I was able to alleviate that situation and right. was able to get that appointment. You know, dealing with all the carrier reps, you know, they all hung the moon. Mm-hmm. All of them did. Sure. And so, so you know, doing that. Um, did, did any of them, uh, and I'm sure they did, and I don't mean to interrupt, but no. did any of them uh, talk on, uh, out of the gate about uh, – requirements relative no, to what you have to write not no most of most of the carriers from what i found and and what you know one of the you know we got the big highlight from a carrier perspective is we were able to get a direct appointment with safeco right great company. which which sort of came from the podcast mm-hmm. so that was good but you know most of them from what i gather and i when you're used to the captive life right production requirements don't even like your pulse doesn't increase right at all right I've had a few say, hey, look, you know, we don't have any requirements before a year. After a year, it's like, and it's a really low number. So, sure. no, I haven't dealt with a lot of that. Gotcha. And then I've had some companies, there's one company out there, which I'm not going to name, that everybody will tell you, if you can fog a mirror, this company will appoint you. Right. We talked about them with Patrick. Right. I'm having the most trouble with them. They're yeah. the last one. Right now, we've got we've got about 22 carriers. <clears throat> And you've reached out to the marketing rep for that company mm-hmm. in this area, and what did they tell you? Because no. I thought they told you at one point no. they were going to take care of it. Don't do this. I filled out the form online. Mm, worst mistake somebody can make. Um, Guys, if you fill out the damn form online yeah. and send in, and it, and you it, are officially screwed. And the reason I did it is because everybody told me, hey. Fog a mirror. Fog a mirror. I'm like, okay, I'm yeah. just going to fill this out sure. online. They'll send me a login. Everything's good. Yeah, right. They easy, call me, easy. and I'm, and I explain the situation. My particular situation, especially with buying this book I'm buying and the book I'm taking with me, has a huge opportunity for a preferred auto carrier. Absolutely. Uh, it would have been a perfect fit. I explained the situation, poured my heart out, made a good business plan. I co-host the Insurance Guys podcast. I know this person, this person, this person. It's like, okay, 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 yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Um, We're going to wait. <laughs> and I'm like, you're going to what? I'm like, we're going to wait. I'm like, okay. And it's, it's one of those carriers that I don't need them, but it would be nice to have oh, them. I, absolutely. Especially since everybody else on every street corner has their contract. Well, I, I, wrote, um, I wrote over, I think we wrote over $150,000 with them last mm-hmm. year in, so, in, in just auto. Eventually was able to get in touch with the local rep who's supposed to push it through at this right. point right now. I don't have it, but looks like I will. They're just dragging their feet. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they, they've got so many people appointed that they're being very selective, which is understandable. Right. Uh, but anyway, so you know, you deal with that. Not to mention managing team members and how that goes, and dealing with payroll and HR issues and production issues. We had a phenomenal first month. Our first month as a scratch agent, because we're scratch, we haven't absorbed that book yet. Mm-hmm. As a scratch agency, our first month, if you take the premium rewrote by the commission rate, we actually made money. Awesome. Uh, but obviously, as you guys know, all the carriers pay on different days, mm-hmm. not to mention things are escrowed and mortgage pay. And you got some carriers that I've got one carrier, our biggest carrier, they pay 60 days back. Right. So I'm getting paid today for stuff I wrote before I opened. Literally everything on a minute level, short of things that slow us up big time, you know, mm-hmm. nothing bad, but on mm-hmm. a minute level, literally every single thing that could go wrong has right. gone wrong. With that being said, it's been freaking phenomenal. It's been great. I want to on live on air and right now. I want to apologize to you, okay? Because I took perverse pleasure in everything. That <laughs> yeah, and, and the reason why, guys, is I've opened up five agencies. Every uh, time I called Scott about one of my, especially like I would, the I would literally start laughing. Issues, he'd be like, "Yep, I've done that yeah, five times." Yeah, you know? right. So, so guys, listen. If you are, if you and are, I was not complaining. Right. No. No. I'm no. Just, I'm no. trying to be. You're venting. Transpa- you're venting. No, not even that. I'm just trying to be transparent for the listeners. Right. Because it's it's something that everybody who's listening to this is probably either going to deal with or has dealt with at some point. So whether you're a captive agent, and let's say you've just got one office, let's say you're a farmer's agent and you've just got one office and you've been there for 25 years, or whether you're a new independent that's thinking about going out on your own, here's what I'm going to tell people. Your phone system's going to get screwed up when you start. Mm -hmm. Okay, Get ready for that. That's happening. 
you are going to have problems with your internet. The signage people are going to tell you that they're going to be out Thursday between 2 and 4 o'clock, and mm-hmm. it will end up being Wednesday between <laughs> 10 and 1. I'll tell you another good one that I forgot. <laughs> so I'm sitting in my office, day one, right. March 1st. Now, right. we started March 1st. Right. We didn't announce the new agency to the world sure. until that the following Sunday, so great, two, two days later, the great, third. Great video, by the way. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Um Guys, so, if you hadn't seen the, the the video he did to open, to kind of open the thing up, it was fantastic. The best compliment I got at Elevate was Seth Zaremba, who's somebody I respect and admire, admire greatly. Absolutely. Said he was fist bumping when he saw it, but um, it was just my manifesto of you know I'm never going to work for another insurance company again. Right. I'm only working for clients from now on. Right. I don't know that there is an amount of money that could make me want to go to work mm. for an insurance company outside of consulting on something. Mm. You know what I mean? Right. Um, as far as like physically selling their product. But anyway, not that there's anything wrong with that. If you do that, that's great. Sure. So March 1st, first day in business, I'm sitting there in my office. It's great. You know, it's, it's almost surreal day mm-hmm. one, you know. Um, I'm mostly doing training with, mm-hmm. you know, culture is very important to me. Mm-hmm. So properly setting that foundation of the quickest way to get you fired is not playing nice in the sandbox and being a, being sure. a not good person. Sitting there, office drama queen. Yeah. I'm sitting there in my office and I look out the window <laughs> and I say, I don't have a business license. <laughs> Forgot to file for a business license. Right. So when my wife took over her agency, which was already established when mm-hmm. she took it over, now she's grown it exponentially. That's not to down what she's done there, but she took over an established oh, agency. She, by the way, guys, as a sidebar before he continues on the business license story, Bradley's wife, who I am incredibly proud of as well, has owned a state farm agency now for two, two years, years and has absolutely crushed it. Guess what day now, she started? Now, March 1st. March 1st. For those of you that don't know, Bradley is married. His wife's State Farm Agency, now that you have moved, which mm-hmm. was 25 feet from your previous employer. It's about 50 feet now. It's now about 50 feet away. 50 feet from me. Yeah. Right. But she has absolutely crushed it she with has. State Farm. She has. But go ahead. I'm she sorry. She's she done great. Me. But no, anyway, so when she got her business license, she went to the to the city and said, I want a business license. I'm taking over this business. Boom. They printed it out right then. I went there. And they're like, no, you got to have this, 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 <laughs> right. this. Like, okay, when's everybody coming? Uh, they're gonna, the inspector's going to come at 3 o'clock on Tuesday. So I tell the team, I'm like, hey, I need y'all to like skedaddle at 3 o'clock on Tuesday, <laughs> which from what I found out, it's not that big of a deal to not right. have one as long as you're, you've, you've applied process. for it. But In I'm process. sitting there and I'm like, and I, and I sit up in my chair and I'm like, I don't have a business license. Right, right, right. And so there's just, there's a lot of little things like that, like setting up your phone system, what kind of internet mm-hmm. to get, what kind of computers to buy. Shout out to Nick Barry at Rocket Referrals. Mm-hmm. You don't even know this. Literally spent like two hours through text with me, showing me, telling me what kind of computers to buy. Right. I'm like, hell, I don't know. You know, Can, can you say what you bought? or? Uh, it... Dude, I don't even know. It was a Dell. Okay. I don't know. T- yeah. Feel free to reach out to me. I will send it to you. But now one of the most pleasant surprises from a technology standpoint is I have been able to use my MacBook. Mm. Mm-hmm. For myself, which I love, I love right. my MacBook. It's, right. it's in the room right now. It literally goes with me everywhere. Uh, the, I think the only carrier that does not jive with it is Travelers, which mm-hmm. we don't have. Mm-hmm. But that's been a plus that right. you know because everybody's cloud based things like that. I say all that. It, it came across as very negative, and I, I felt like I was spilling my guts a little bit to encourage people because everything that can go wrong will go wrong. Correct. You just and and none of that really phased me. I'm getting a little agitated right now with my office, which Mm -hmm. is 100% my fault because from an aesthetic standpoint, it's not quite there. It's still Mm -hmm. got parts of it that look like a construction zone. Our grand opening is in a few weeks, um, so it'll hopefully be ready by then. And it's like moving into a new house. Let me knock on wood where they can hear it. Yeah, It takes time, and and the thing is, like, we can still sell insurance. Like, we're 90% over the phone. We've had two customers that we brought into the office just because they were a little little more elderly. You know, it doesn't affect them. But I'm getting a little frustrated with that. But other than that, I pretty much took everything in stride other than venting to Scott Mm -hmm. because I knew he he would relate. And I say that to encourage people because despite all that, it's been freaking great. I had a day last week that literally everything was going wrong while at the same time everything was going right from a writing business standpoint. Sure. And I was rocking and rolling, and I called Laurel, and I said, you know what, this, this is fun. Yeah, it's Like, yeah. it really is. Like, it's getting to the point to where it's fun because we've got business rolling in. People are finding out about us where I'm able to market in the way that I want to market without having to worry about anybody mm-hmm. breathing down my neck. Scott asked me at the beginning of the podcast. I never asked him the question of what's the biggest difference. Mm-hmm. Between, Hand, difference between capt, yeah, where you were as a captive hands, versus independent. Hands down, and I know there are some captives that are in really good situations. Oh, yeah. Um, 
but you know, hands down, the best part is not having anyone breathing down my neck, mm-hmm. or just the the threat of someone saying, "Hey, you can't do that." Mm-hmm. Even though you know, hands off to the company I work for, I can count two times that I got told not to do something. Mm-hmm. But that does not include all of the things I wanted to do that, you just that I could. didn't do or, right. or say, hey, this podcast, you know, when right. I started this podcast, I was a little bit more timid mm-hmm. to do it because I was like, you know, I don't want to commit all this time, energy, effort, and money to something and then, and then somebody come in and say, yeah, you can't, can't do, do this, mm-hmm. as we all know that can happen. So just kind of Having the the buck stops here, right? You know what I mean, and and things like you know, hey, look, this is the way we're going to do this. Here's why, and we do it. So that's been incredibly good. Uh, another, probably the most empowering moment since we opened the agency. Uh, there's really been two things that's happened. One, we wrote a lot of premium our first month. It's not you know you hear these guys are like, I did a hundred thousand my first day. You know, it wasn't anything like that. <laughs> but we did a lot of premium my first month. More than we thought, because yeah. like I said, I'm hiring a team. So my mm-hmm. eventual goal is to replace myself where I don't sell. Right. The only thing I sell is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the marketing for the agency, and I'm going to handle the big commercial stuff. That's mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I'm trying to train these team members to sell like me. Right. And so uh, I didn't expect to write a lot the first month, but we did. And one thing that's been really cool, we literally have had no customer that we wrote that we did not put in a better insurance situation right, right, right. prior to them walking in my door calling right, me. Right. Literally every single person, we save money, mm-hmm. we increase coverages, mm-hmm. or we lower deductibles. Mm-hmm. And if we saved the money and we didn't do the other two, the other two were the same. Right. Like literally every single person we've written, we have put in a better insurance situation. And that's not to say that I'm special because I know a lot of our listeners, probably all of them, do that as well. But it's just been a nice feeling because we have the options, Mm -hmm. because we're not being told by corporate, hey, you need to write this many preferred auto policies or Mm -hmm. you're not going to get to go to Destin on this trip. Right. Because we're not being told that, we can, and and I say that and people think it's shtick, but it's literally like unbiased as it gets. And probably the most humbling, coolest thing that's happened since we opened is I had a client that reached out to me. They sent me their policy. Mm-hmm. I looked at it. I called her back and I said, you need to stay right where you are. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you are, you have a really good policy with a really good carrier and a really good agent. Mm-hmm. And you need to stay exactly where you are. And I kid you not, Scott, that felt as good mm-hmm. as writing a $50,000 commercial case. Right. Like it really, really did because we are genuinely working for the customer, mm-hmm. not the insurance company, and not even our agency. We don't. We, we have a motto in our agency. We don't work for our agency. Mm-hmm. We work for the customer. Right. We're going to do what's best for that customer every single time. So that, and I, and I know you can tell I got a little fired up about that, but mm-hmm. that is truthfully how we feel. So it's been great to live out our message. You know, our agency core values mm-hmm. are we care because it's the best marketing strategy mm-hmm. ever. Fifty one forty nine. Mm-hmm. We give more value than we take right. in every situation. You know, I was talking to a podcast sponsor the other day, and I said, look, I said, no matter how much money you give me, I'm going to make sure I provide more value to you than you gave me, and I feel the same way with insurance, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. I've got four questions for yeah, you. Sorry, I went on a tangent. No, that's okay. For our podcast listeners, how did you set up your portal insurance from a tax FEIN scenario? Did you set up as an LLC, an S-Corp, yeah. a C-Corp? And that's a good question because I feel like this podcast is too much about me and we need to provide a little value. No, so, well, I'm a, this, um, that's part of it, though, is your story is providing the value. Right, right. Yeah, he's asking a question to, I think you're jarring something else that went wrong that I forgot. No, uh, no, okay. no. I wouldn't All right, bring so that my, up. My, well, we'll talk about it. My original plan was to at least start as a sole proprietor mm-hmm. just to avoid all the government bureaucratic BS that goes with filing as an LLC or an S-Corp mm-hmm. or whatever, just to kind of start that way. Mm-hmm. So I get that first carrier appointment. They appointed Bradley Flowers. At that point, I didn't have a name. That was mm-hmm. that was in January. Right. Uh, they, they appointed Bradley Flowers. Um, I had to get an FEIN number, which is easy to do. Yep. In any of this, if you guys need help with it, reach out to me. Get an FEIN, which is free, easy to do. So then I go to the second carrier, and they're like, "We need your," you know. I put my license on Mm -hmm. there, and I didn't, I didn't know this. All my independent buddies out there are going to laugh, right? But I didn't know this. I didn't know that there was a such thing as an agency license, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not a, not just your regular producer license, right? 
And so they're like, we need, no, we need your agency license. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, okay, no big deal. So I go to the state of Alabama. It's a money grab. It's sure. $300, $135, I think, to the state of Alabama. You pay it. You have to have a producer license to get the agency license. Right. You pay it and you get the license. So right. I go to do that, and they're like, nope, cannot get an agency license in the state of Alabama if you're a sole proprietor. Wow, I didn't know that. You have to be LLC, S-Corp, C-Corp, Did not all that. know that. Did not know that. And see, the thing is, like, the captive agents don't have to worry about it because the corporation right. handles that. Ag- they'll, they'll get, like, I think one agency license for the entire state. That's right. So I'm like, okay. And really, as long as the carrier doesn't require it, you don't have to have it. Because I have some carriers that don't want it. I have some mm-hmm. that do. So I'm like, okay, oh, crap. So I file for an LLC. I didn't want to go the legal Zoom route because theirs is so expensive, but I didn't have time to go to my accountant, so I did it myself. I then get, I think, a letter from the state of Alabama. In the state of Alabama, you cannot have the word insurance mm-hmm. in your LLC name. Yeah, You can, but mm-hmm. you have to go through an extended process mm-hmm. to show that you're an agency, not a company, because right. they want to make sure nobody's slipping through without having to pay premium taxes. Right. So then I had to cha- literally change the legal name of my company mm-hmm. without the word insurance in order to get that in order to get that license. Wow. So then I get all these carrier appointments. Then I realize that the FEIN number that I'm using is the one that was the FEIN number for Bradley Flowers, not Portal Insurance. Oh boy. So I have to go back to every single carrier and say Amend your application. Which involves a new contract. Right. So I had to go through that whole process again. Thankfully, that kind of stuff happens, and they're like, here you go, no big deal. Same thing happened with my bank account. Mm -hmm. Because the bank account I was using, the bank started giving me trouble because it was a business account in my name. It didn't say portal on it. Mm -hmm. So I had to get a whole new bank account, which involved doing the same thing again. So that's a a long-winded answer to say, uh, right now, LLC, but I will be S-Corp in the very near future. Yeah, I um I think it's the most tax advantageous, especially if you're making money. Well, what's great about and I'm not an accountant. Yeah, well, what's what's great about your story is I had the exact same thing happen to me. So I went to go change my name from Scott Howell and Associates. Mm-hmm. Instead of I Protect Insurance, I chose the name In Trust Insurance. I N T R U S T In Trust Insurance. In Scott, we trust. Yeah, yeah, I was oh, I was going to do a lot of that. Mm-hmm. So I file it. Let you do the name trust, right? I file bank. it. Yeah, exactly. I file it with the state of Alabama, or my attorney did, which I have attorneys on speed dial because my entire family is nothing but attorneys, which is for me is a huge advantage, right? Because is that the what is that why that you're the way you are? I'm the black sheep of the family. So it allowed you to like be truly like yeah, no so, holds bar because you know you've got all these attorneys yeah, on the back. I, I have more attorneys than OJ Simpson, and I have used all of them. Trust me. I filed the name in trust, and about two weeks later, I don't hear anything. My my dad's secretary calls me, and she says, hey, state of Alabama ain't letting you use this name because in the state of Alabama, if you have trust in your name, it has to be a trust company or a mm-hmm. bank, something like that. Next question, and this really isn't a question, but it goes back to what you just said mm-hmm. about your employees and your culture making sure – that they understand that they don't work for you. They work for their clients, right? And I work for them. Right. And so I got this idea from Una Roy, guys. Write this shit down. On every pay stub that my people get now, and Excalibur Insurance out of Canada gave me this idea, I contacted my bookkeeper and I said, on every pay stub that you email on Thursdays to my people who all get direct deposit into their account, both their salary and their commissions. I want you to put in the subject line, this payment was made possible by the clients of Mm -hmm. iProtect Insurance and Financial Services. Mm -hmm. Because I want them to know, Scott Howell's not paying you your salary and your commissions. Our clients are paying you that salary. Do you do direct deposit or they get a physical check? I, no, I do direct deposits. I don't. If I tried to do physical checks, every time they were supposed to get a check, mm-hmm. I would either be in Mobile for a podcast <laughs> and then let that happen. Mm-hmm. And now they've got bills that are about to come out of their account, and I'm down here or I'm I'm at. You I had know, to do that one time. I forgot to pay them. I forgot to submit payroll. Yeah. The, sec- the second right now we've had, we just went through our fourth pay period. And the second one, I didn't see the email from the girl that does my payroll. <laughs> I forgot to submit it, so I had to do paper check. The girl that's doing your payroll, I assume that she knows and you know that you have to do quarterly tax. She does. That okay. Me, yeah. okay. Yeah, that's another huge thing. Guys, mm-hmm. don't start an insurance agency, hire two or three employees, and don't do your quarterly taxes, or you'll mm-hmm. wake up about fourth quarter and owe 
$30,000 to the Internal Revenue Service. Yep. So my next thing I want to ask you about, and I've got two more things I want to talk about. Mm-hmm. So at your previous employer, and when I met you, mm-hmm. I was under the impression, because of the company that you worked for, you guys placed a high value on the sale of life insurance. <laughs> right? Is that true or false? Like every other captive carrier does, yes. Uh, I, I, or close, close. I think some more than others. Oh, yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So since you've opened up your independent agency, has that mentality of life, 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 has that kind of gone away now? Oh, yes. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah. Now, yeah. I love life insurance. Sure. I love People need it. sitting down with clients mm-hmm. and talking about life insurance. It's one of my favorite subjects to talk about. It's one of my favorite things to sell. I hate prospecting for it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I still understand the value of it. Sure. And I knew that would happen. I, I kind of yeah, set you up I for still that question. Un- I still, yeah, I still understand the value of it. Uh-huh. But as of right now, uh, April the, what's today's date? 9th, 10th. April the 10th, 2019, uh-huh. Bradley Flowers is never selling another life insurance policy again. Yeah. That being said, I still understand the value of it. I still want to protect my client. Right. We still pivot to it. Sure, yeah. We still say, at, hey, at look, who's ask. got your life insurance? We're going right. to notate that in your file. Oh, you don't have any? You want right. some? Right. Okay, we're going to refer you to somebody Sure. who's going to do that. Oh, so you don't, you're not even licensed. You don't even have a life company to write life insurance with, do you? I had okay. a guy walk in my office two weeks ago and said, hey, can I get a life insurance oh, that's, quote? That's a, that's a kiss of death. He's probably just found out he had yeah. stage four cancer. I, I said, nope. I said, but... <laughs> I know somebody can. And was, I pointed it, was, it one, was it one of the guys that was at dinner with us last night? Is that somebody sent- that was at dinner with us last night? Okay, that was sent that you're sending anyway. It to. Okay. So uh, no, I'm saying yeah. that you're sending it to. Yeah, it was somebody that was at dinner last night. Okay, I understand the value. It's just it's that's not, not what we're going to do. Right. You know what I mean. Right. Um, now, and I hate to break this to everybody whose carrier pushes them to sell life insurance. I hate to break this to you. The reason they want you to sell life insurance, the singular number one reason, there's a lot of them, but the number one reason they want you to sell life insurance is not to protect your clients. Right. It's one word, and it's maybe the most important word in insurance is retention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it's been proven Mm -hmm. that a client who also has life insurance along Mm -hmm. with their auto, home, umbrella, and personal Mm -hmm. articles policy is going to stay on the books longer Mm -hmm. than someone who does not have that product. Right. Contrarily, the person who does have that mm-hmm. and then leaves with their PNC, mm-hmm. there's a higher likelihood they're not going to cancel that life because mm-hmm. it's based on your health and your age the day you buy it. Mm-hmm. If they go to Allstate or wherever down mm-hmm. the road and then they go up on their premiums, guess who the first person they call for that PNC quote again is going to be? It's the person that have that life insurance. So I hate to break that news to everyone. But that being said, from a retention standpoint, I understand the value mm-hmm. of it, which is why we still pivot to it. Sure. Because to me, if I can send that to a life agent um, who's not going to poach the PNC, it's mm-hmm. the same thing mm-hmm. as and, and guess what? In the client's eyes, it looks like, damn, he's really doing what he could get licensed with some uh-huh. Bobo life company and write this to me, but instead he's gonna send me somebody who's really gonna sell me the product I need. Right. And it's been a breeze not having to worry about yeah, I think you gain some credibility when you do that. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Th- I, for through the client's eyes. I feel like too many companies move the ball so much for mm-hmm. their, their agents. You're like, mm-hmm. We want you to sell auto, home, right, umbrella. Right. Uh, we want you to do loans. We want you to do uh, yeah, right. mutual funds, 401k. Right. Like it's, it's this constant movement, and there's going to be something that struggles mm-hmm. every single time, Absolutely. something that lacks. And so for us to really hone in and grow vertically, as Matt and Zach would say, sure. and focus on our niche, which is auto, home, and mid-sized commercial, right. it's allowed us to really – dial in our message right you know and our people go to work every day knowing what they have they need to sell not i'm not going to walk into the office and say okay guys we're going to sell whole life insurance today you know what i mean right not that there's anything wrong with that if you do that but just for us it's been great and And he asked that question on purpose he knew i'd get fired up yeah well i mean but as somebody that's going to be going independent next year i want to keep the financial services side of my business and that's great but the way I want to do it is to partner with somebody that is really good at it, you know? Yeah. So not much different well, than how you're doing it. It goes back to like Troy Korsgaden uh-huh. that we interviewed. Uh-huh. Troy wrote Power Position Your Agency, which is Fantastic probably book. the best insurance operational book there is as far as how to run an agency. I also agree. wrote a book called Discussion Partner. He talked about it on our podcast with him. You know, the 21st Century Insurance Agency 
is a discussion partner mm-hmm. in that, hey, Scott, I need to get insurance on my airplane. Mm-hmm. Scott doesn't do airplane insurance. Scott goes and finds someone who does airplane right. insurance. And then you become the resource for that client. I've had somebody call me and ask me to insure a helicopter before. So on my way down here, guys, to his point, let me tell you what happened. You need to hear this, Bradley. You'll love this. I stopped at Starbucks to get a mocha frappuccino with an extra shot of espresso. I enjoy the fact that you own that. Yeah, like I do. You don't, you don't, I didn't stop getting black coffee. No, 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 no. So I, I, but I always get an extra shot of espresso because I, it I still feel a little more manly. Well, I still had an, a three hour drive to get right. down here, right? Two and a half hours. And as I'm pulling my truck into the parking lot, my phone rings and I look at it. It's one of my, my big commercial clients. It's got like 15, 20, 30 rental houses, right? right. Got a pretty big, and, and he's got home auto, lot, a bunch of life insurance, four or five life insurance policies with me. He is in Savannah, Georgia, and he's looking at two pieces of property. One is a hospital property that he's looking at, and the other was another piece of property. I think it was a strip center over there. First thing out of his mouth, he said, Scott, I need to close on these pieces of property. I need to do it here pretty quick, and and I've got both elevation certificates with me. I need to do something about this flood insurance, and I need a quote. And I said, stop right there. Don't say a word. I said, there is not a person in the United States of America that you could have called to get this handled for you better than I am. (laughs) And I said, let me tell you why. I know a guy that has a master's degree in flood mitigation. You know who I'm talking about, Chris Green. I want you to hang up the phone. I'm going to send you his contact card, and we're going to get this shit handled right now. Well, Chris was able to help him and is helping him. And to your point, what does that do for me? Well, I gain altitude. You know, when I call Scott Howell, he may not have what I need, but but he knows who's got what I need, right? And that's exactly what you're talking about right now. And I love what you said. That's a sales tactic. Yeah, it's like yeah, absolutely. It's, I am the best person in the world to handle this because I'm sending you. You to got somebody bad else. credit? Thank God you called me. Right. Exactly. You got good credit? Thank God you called me. You, you, you want to insure this yacht? Thank yeah. God you called me. Yeah. You need a wristwatch fixed? Yeah. Thank goodness you called me because yeah. I, I know exactly yeah. who can do it. So that's been good. What's the other question? This is one of those questions that we get a lot, and mm-hmm. we had this guy asked the other day. Uh, this young man was talking about he was wanting to go independent and borrow a bunch of money. Mm-hmm. So again, without sharing details, in my opinion, this is some Scott's opinion, Another reason I'm proud of you, and the way you built your agency, you started out with a State Farm model of you ain't coming in here by yourself to run this agency, right? You're right. going to hire team members, and it's coming out of your pocket. And you saved, in my opinion, about what State Farm asks their agents to have in the bank when they do that. You really kind of followed the State Farm model I did. when you did I did. this. I did. Talk a little bit about, I guess, and this is going to segue into digital agency versus how you're doing your agency right now in terms of the blend of the mm-hmm. two that we've talked about. But, you know, hiring two people out of the gate, you had to save money. You couldn't have done what you've done with $300 in your checking account nope. and, and your wife not working, right? And you couldn't. And fortunately, I was in a position that I could do that yeah. because I have a spouse that runs a successful agency. E- exactly. And, and I'm afforded the opportunity to not take an income for a year or two. Exactly. You know, which I'm not money motivated, so that doesn't bother me. Right. But, well, it's, it's like me. I mean, for five years, I, I overhired, but yeah. I only took $50,000 well, a year and out I of the hired, agency. Yeah, and I hired three people. One of them didn't work out. Yeah, right, you right, know? right. I'm probably going to add a few more now. Right. Actually interviewing two guys today, yeah. now that I think about it. My advice to anyone who's thinking about borrowing money to start an agency is – I wouldn't do it, mm-hmm. but I would be willing to. And right. what I mean by that is, is Bradley started his agency with a specified amount of money in the bank. You know, I've got this book of business that mm-hmm. I can pull from. I'm willing right now to go get a line of credit or go get a loan mm-hmm. or go get a business credit card mm-hmm. to to help supplement if I need to. Right. My answer would be be willing to, but don't only rely on that. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of my thought process from a money standpoint, you know, the beautiful thing about insurance is if I write a hundred thousand dollars of business mm-hmm. in March mm-hmm. and my commission rates fifteen percent, mm-hmm. that's fifteen thousand dollars. Right. I'm gonna get fifteen thousand dollars in March. Right. I'm gonna get fifteen thousand dollars in March of next year too. Sure. As long as it stays on the books. Right. I'm going to get $15,000 in March of the next year after that, too. Mm-hmm. So what I say that to say, in my head, and this is would be my advice to anyone. Now, I'm coming from a place I haven't gotten there yet. Mm-hmm. My agency is brand new. 
I don't know what I'm doing more times than I do. I wouldn't. I, wouldn't I would. Say that. I would plan financially. You got to be able to float your one, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you got to you got to set your goals in a way that if you don't hit them, mm-hmm. you're still good as far mm-hmm. as the amount of. You know what I mean? Like we have a number that our office has a, a monthly premium goal. If we hit half of it, we're still good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so what you got to do is you got to have enough money in the bank somehow mm-hmm. to float it a year, mm-hmm. and you got to get as close as you can to your goals mm-hmm. every month in mm-hmm. that first year. You got to put your freaking head down. Those of you that follow me on social media know that I am not posting. I'm busy. And, and actually, you know, I had a conversation with Gary Vaynerchuk about that. It's like, because he posts all his own stuff, and mm-hmm. he's like, if I'm busy, I don't post as much. Right. And it kind of made me like, okay, it's okay if I only yeah. do once a day. Versus five, and, and and you had to um, kind of walk me off the cliff on that too. Yeah, remember yeah. that? Mm-hmm. I called I called Bradley a couple weeks ago, and I said, "Man, I'm so upset with myself. I, I I've been so sporadic, and 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 I think you did a good job of being like, you know, but basically what Gary told you, it's it's all right. Yeah, you know, you're busy. You've got a lot of shit going on. Mm-hmm. You don't have a marketing department with three people in it right. that are supposed to be. You know, right. doing social and media. Gary's thing. Gary does have the department, but he still posts everything himself. They right. send it to him, and he approves it. But you got to put your head down that first year, mm-hmm. and, and longer than that. But we're talking right. about the first year right now, and you just got to sell insurance like your hair is on fire, right. like Scott says. And so that's kind of my thought process: is have enough money in the bank to float it a year, put your head down, mm-hmm. sell as much insurance as you can. And by God, burn the ships mm-hmm. to get to that first renewal. Right. When you get to that the end of that first year, then your renewals kick in. Right. That's when you can really start. Okay. And that's where I really think that we're going to be dangerous mm-hmm. in terms of a local market. Right. When we are making money and able to invest back into the business. Sure. That's when you're really going to see a lot of Bradley Flowers mm-hmm. in terms of being able to market the way that I want to market mm-hmm. to the budget that mm-hmm. I want to market to. Mm-hmm. In short, the advice would be I would financially plan to be able to float it for a year. I agree. You know, hey, if your dream is to run a digital agency mm-hmm. from your house, that budget's going to be less. I right. mean, if I was running a digital agency from my house, my overhead would be a tenth what it right. is. Right. The, and you're probably technology savvy enough to be able to do that. Probably, but in, in Mobile, Alabama, that doesn't work. you got to have a storefront. and. From that perspective, you know, everybody doesn't have to do it the way that I do it. Mm-hmm. But regardless of the situation, I think you need to be able to float it for a year. Right. You know, you're not going to float it off new business written. You don't need to rely on mm-hmm. the new business being what floats it. You mm-hmm. need to rely on the money that you have in the bank that's mm-hmm. floating. You see what I mean? Right. Not, okay, I can float it for a year if we can write $80,000 right. a month. Right. Like, don't put yourself in that situation. Right. You might have to wait a little bit longer at your current in your current situation. I know how it is, man. I know how it is. I could not have stayed a day longer mm-hmm. at my current agency. Mm-hmm. It, it literally, I could not have. God put the right timing in place mm-hmm. where I got to quit about three months before I thought I would. Mm-hmm. And thankfully, I was able to do that. Mm-hmm. And so I know how it is, but you just got to look at it as, hey, paying your dues. Mm-hmm. you know. And I think my opinion on starting an independent agency is I, I would not go scratch. Yeah. P- period in the yeah. sentence i would yeah. not when i say scratch i mean zero premium digital storefront however you're going to do it i would not do that i think the big advantage you and i both had uh you now me next year even though i mean i'm i've just signed a sub direct appointment with travelers and uh, progressive home which i've already been riding the auto so technically that kind of makes me an independent on the personal line side and we've been an independent on the commercial for a long time but I wouldn't. I would not go independent. The advantage you and I have is experience. Right. Can you imagine starting a scratch insurance agency, zero premium, no premium, and you have no experience? The only you have no experience. You've ne- you don't know shit from shampoo about insurance, dude. There's so much. I mean, would would you even have a shot? Like, what is it? Is yeah. it the is it is it the uh, Dumb and Dumber line of one in a million? Yeah, I got a shot. Is that what we're talking about? The silver lining in that is literally y'all did you see that text no uh. i just got a text that said do you sell life insurance <laughs> literally <laughs> um no, i didn't see that the silver lining in that is ignorance is bliss and you right. wouldn't know what you wouldn't know you know what i mean 
Well, I, I, guess, I guess if you had a rich uncle and well, you were in a job did, that you hated, and he died, and he yeah. said, and, and in his will he left you two hundred fifty, mm-hmm. three hundred thousand dollars. Even if you didn't you know? have a rich uncle, I mean, if if you didn't know what you didn't know, and you tried it, I mean, it, and you got you two or three carriers, you got your management system. That's, I mean, I, I could see it working, but no, knowing what I know, I'm like, oh my god, it gives me so much anxiety to think about doing that. Right. You know what I mean? Thankfully, I didn't try it until I was ready. Right, you know, right. It was going to be direct bill. Mm-hmm. Well, we get appointed with a with a carrier, and the reason we got appointed with this specific carrier is the agency I'm buying has some policies with them. It's mm-hmm. an ENS market, mm-hmm. so we write our first policy with them. It was a right. little rental house. We actually, took it from Nationwide. <laughs> whoop whoop! And so I write it. We send the bill to the mortgage company. Mm-hmm. Invoice to the mortgage company. About eight days go by. And I get an email from that carrier that says, when are you going to pay us our premium? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? I'm like, we're waiting on the mortgage company. Yeah, but we're on the agency bill mm-hmm. on the first. So when I signed up with this carrier, they said, do you want to go agency bill or direct? I said, oh, direct. Right. So I'm thinking, they're going to handle it. They're like, um, no, no. Even though it's direct bill, that's just the renewal. You have to handle that. It's agency bill on the first one. And I'm like... So this mortgage company has not paid this premium. Everybody listening to this knows how long it takes for mortgage companies to pay. Right. And I've got to come out of pocket $1,100 mm-hmm. for a $1,300 policy. Mm-hmm. Things like that that I did. I mean, those things that right. I didn't know that I was right. like, that like, if I'm trying to put this agency together with no money and right. I've got to fork out, you know what I mean? Right, right, right. right. Um, but now even still, like I told the team, like, so we have two carriers that do that. Mm-hmm. I told the team, I said, the only time I'm okay with them writing that is if it's a mortgage closing and we know we're going to get paid that week or it's insured self-pay. If it's a midterm change and it's escrowed, we're mm-hmm. not writing. Yeah. You know, so things like that, that, you know, and of course, thankfully we've, we, we've had to, we, we had to get a sweep account, mm-hmm. even though I was like, damn it, I'm not getting a sweep right. account. We got set up and I don't know if Scott knows this, you know, we wrote a second case with that. It was mm-hmm. self-pay. Um, and the way all these ENS markets do, man, if you bind a policy and then the client backs out, guess who's got to pay that premium? You do. It's earned. Yeah. So listen, I've run into more we, than one case. In fact, I've got two contractors right now uh-huh. that owe me a total of a thousand dollars. I'm about to give a big plug to a company. Mm. So I had a lady the other day called me for a a quote, and mm. she's like, "Hey, she's like, I have this rental house I'm buying. She's one of these people that buys ten rental houses a year. Mm. Um, it's so close to the coast that my current uh, insurance company won't insure it. Mm. And I'm and I'm looking at this. It's an eight hundred dollar policy." Mm-hmm. Which is small here on the coast. Our average homeowner premium is fourteen hundred dollars. Right. For that's for a primary home. She's like, if you'll write this, I'll let you quote everything else. So I'm looking at it from a lead generation standpoint, right? Mm-hmm. Like I'm going to write this house mm-hmm. and I'm going to get everything else. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I write it, I bind it, and she's like, okay, can I give you my credit card? Mm. I'm like, mm. we're not set up for. That's another thing I didn't think of. Mm-hmm. We're not set up for credit card. So. To the rescue came Todd from ePay Policy. Mm. We met him at Elevate. Elevate. Yeah, listen to the podcast. And essentially what ePay is, is ePay gives you a link. I got set up in about two days. Mm. They're not paying for this, Mm. by the way. Mm -hmm. Uh, ePay gives me a link. I send that link to her. She enters her credit card information, her policy number. It's a secure checkout. All the liability is on ePay. Mm. And then... The cost of the transactions passed along to the insured. So if the insured wants to pay with credit card or ACH, mm-hmm. they do it through there. Two days later, the money's in my account, and I can pay the carrier. Mm-hmm. That was a a service that I had not planned to use at mm-hmm. all. That mm-hmm. literally came to the rescue. So mm-hmm. those of you that are looking at you, you got to look for a credit card merchant. And guess what? PayPal and Square they don't jive mm-hmm. with insurance. You mm-hmm. cannot use PayPal and you cannot use Square mm-hmm. for insurance. Mm-hmm. It's in your contract with them that they do not do insurance premiums. Mm-hmm. So I think I want to end this by saying something that I've been meaning to say on a lot of podcasts and I apologize to our captive agency force that are listening to this right now that I haven't already said this. So I know that it seems like Bradley and I sit here day after day when you listen to this podcast and we make it sound like <clears throat> You know, we, we are very independent agency leaning. I mean, what we've just done right now is give the playbook on how to start an independent agency in the trials and tribulations. There's captive agents listening to this like, I don't want to deal with that crap. I'm right. right here. Right. Mazel tov. Yes. That is fine. Absolutely. Well, that's where I was going with this. Yeah. So about a month or two ago, Bradley and I were talking one day, and I said, you know, Bradley, 
I know that these captive agents that listen to our podcast probably think we're very left hand leaning towards independent, you know, agencies. And you're, they think you, that they don't listen to any other you, ones. You've <laughs> gone independent. I'm about to have to go independent. I was telling Bradley, I said, you know, the power of that brand, and we talked a little bit about this yesterday. The power of that brand with with the big four that I'll I'll, I'll briefly mention, but but na- uh, State Farm, Nationwide, All State Farmers. Uh, and there's there's some others as well. I was telling Bradley, I said, you know, if an AVP from State Farm called me tomorrow and he was out of Birmingham or Nashville and he said, Scott, I've been following you. You're a good dude. We've got a book of business. We're, we decided not to split it up. It's in downtown Nashville. It's got about $4 million in premium. Big office. Guys died of a heart attack. We need somebody to come in there that knows their shit and can can be a rock star for us. Do you want that book of business? I told Bradley, guys, I said, I'd have to take a long, <laughs> hard look. I would probably say to him, give me a week to think about that because I'm not so sure if a major brand like that made me an offer that I could that I could refuse something like that because – Again, I know we sound like we lean towards independence, but there are so many advantages, a lot of which we just kind of talked mm-hmm. about through this podcast. And there's advantages to both. Yeah, of of having a state farm agency or a nationwide agency, which I know is, is about to go away, all state agency. There's so many, you know, Chris Paradiso got on here like third, fourth podcast we ever did, and he started talking about, you got to make a brand guide. You need a brand guide. Guess what? State farm has a brand guide. You print it out. You get on your computer on the VPN with State Farm. You can print your damn brand guide out. There's your brand guide. There's just so many advantages to being a, a captive agent uh, in terms of a lot of things. Now, is there a lot of disadvantages? Absolutely there is. But there's a reason why, guys, when you pull into the Target parking lot to go get your, your groceries, that every single vehicle in that Target parking lot is different. You know, people are different. And there are a lot. Of, there are a lot of really good at captive agents that are happy as a lark being a captive. And there's a lot of independent agents that you could hammer cock a forty five to their head, and they wouldn't be a captive agent. To me, I'm one of those. Yeah. Because in my mind, I'm trading freedom for frustration. Sure. Sure. So I, you know what I'm saying. So right, I, right. I've got freedom. Right. But that comes with frustration. Absolutely. So if if I'm the type of person that you know what I'm sick of dealing with the right. with the frustrations of having to set up my credit card merchant mm-hmm. and making sure my carrier download comes in and connecting this program to that. Right. You know we would go the captive route. You right, know and right, right. I, I'm really glad you bring that up because we are unique in our podcast in that we do have a captive and an independent audience because yeah, both of us were captive when we started sure, sure. this podcast. Yeah. So we were sort of talking to that audience inadvertently, subconsciously, not on purpose. Absolutely. You know, and I think a lot of podcasts, including ours default to the independent mm-hmm. side because it, I mean, there's no compliance. It's easier to talk about, you know, independent agents are a little bit more forthcoming mm-hmm. uh, with information and how they're doing things because that captive side is so cutthroat, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. when you're limited to and one, regulatory and regulatory, and yeah. when you're limited to one product, I don't think the, we've it, ever it, had a captive it, agent on here, have we? Yeah, we have, we have, yeah, yeah, um, we have. We've had a few. We've had a few. Uh, Troy Kors yeah. Garden, uh, yeah, we is, have. is captive. Um, we've got three or four. Yeah, but and we've had some people that like Tom Hagner that appeal to that audience. The biggest fear an independent agent has in sharing mm-hmm. what they're doing that's working is somebody else is going to copy it and do it. Well. Mm-hmm. You and I both know that ideas are great, but execution is the the name of the game. Exactly. That's an Instagram quote. <laughs> a captive agent has a few more fears. Right. You know, if we bring a captive agent on, not only if he shares something, he or she shares something that's working, not only is there a, a likelihood one of their competitors is going to hear it, copy it, and implement mm-hmm. it and steal some of their thunder, but then you've got compliance saying, whoa, 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 you don't, can't do that anymore. Talk, so yeah, right. why open yourself up to that? Sure. So that's about all I've got. Hey, but, I, I, uh, I'll tell you, I'll leave with a funny story. So about five or six years ago, we used to have these nationwide district meetings. Uh, I, I'm sure every state had them. Oh, well, I know they did. And the sales manager would call a district meeting. It was always on like a Tuesday or Wednesday. And, In the most inconvenient place. Sure. The most inconvenient time. Yeah. Right. There's 23 agents, agency force. There's only 23 nationwide exclusive agents in north alabama but this was this how was, many exclusive agents? There, i think 23 principal agents in alabama in north alabama okay. north okay. of coleman at the time we were meeting at like an embassy suites conference room you know typical typical insurance meeting 
And she had set up the chairs. The sales manager had set up the chairs in a circle around the conference room. And she was talking inside the circle. And this is an opportunity for her to share news and, and relevant information about what Nationwide's doing. And we usually served lunch after it was over. And sometimes product people would come in. But she sits up the circle. She gets in the middle of the circle. And it's kind of getting towards the end of the meeting. And she says, uh, and this, this speaks to ex- exclusive agents not wanting to share information about what they're doing that works. She goes, all right, guys, listen up. We got all of you here today. Proud to be here. I want I want to go around the room right now, and I want each one of you to tell a tactic in sales that's working for you and your agency. Now, remember, oh, we're we're boy. all competitors down the street from one another, that right? Is like, bus- that is the business equivalent of the first day in college. <laughs> The teacher saying, "All right, everybody, stand up and introduce yourself." Nobody yeah. wants to do that crap. Exactly. So, and not only that, it's even worse because not only do they are they petrified to stand up and say something, but now you're asking to tell the person that that's your competitor yeah. three miles down the street from you what's working for you. So we go around the the, the horn there, around the the classroom, and twenty three agents get up, and every one of them say the exact same thing: <laughs> just ask for the business. <laughs> That was asking, the only that was the only asking, thing anybody said. Asking that. for the business. Exactly. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. I hope you got something out of it. I would say that the most DMs, emails and all that we get are questions regarding going independent or yeah, talking about absolutely. that. And I uh, hope we were able to help you with some of that today. And Bradley, I want to tell you how much I appreciate you sharing your experiences so far. Yeah, man. And and I can't wait for another six months. I think we need to do this again about December, kind of year end. Bradley's been in it now for 10, 11 months and come kind of circle back and see what, what, what we both think. And then next year, of course, I'll have that opportunity as well. But guys, remember what I always say, rewards come from action, not discussion. If you think that Bradley Flowers could have opened portal insurance and gone through the trials and tribulations and daily frustration of this doesn't work and that doesn't work and we can't do that and we're not going to be able to do that and this needs to get fixed. He was able to do all that because he was not going to stop. The the option for Bradley Flowers when he came to each one of those 15-foot walls was either go over it, go under it, go around it, or go through it. The but ball is going in the end zone. But stopping and turning his ass around and going back the other direction was not an option. Again, rewards come from action, not discussion. Figure out a way to get around, through, or over the wall. And regardless of whether you're a captive or independent, get after it today and get your ass out from behind that desk and go out and make money for your family. Make money for your kids. Make money for your college fund. Go make money for your wife and your husband. And write good business for the agencies that you represent and write good business for the companies that you represent. And Bradley Flowers, I love you. Love you too, buddy. Scott, our next podcast just canceled. Uh huh. This is officially the last recording we are going to do in this studio because we are moving to a new studio. Johnny, the, the producer, that they're moving to a new building uh, in two weeks. Guys. So this is the last time we are going to record at Deep Fried Studios. I think we need to get a picture. Absolutely. Guys. That means nothing to the audience, but well, to mean, me it, it does. It means a lot to me, and, and it's making me. Uh, I'm, hold on a second, we're getting a picture here. Hold on, hold on. everybody, everybody, hold on, hold on, everybody, hold on. Let me... Well, guys, I'm gonna tell you what that means to me. This is where it all started, and uh, I, I, I speak for Bradley. I am humbled, and it has been a blessing in my life to be here and be a part of this in this studio. And, and no matter what happens. In our lives, moving forward, uh, we can always say that this is where it all began. And uh, I'm just so thankful for each one of you that listen to this podcast. Hope to one day get a chance to meet you in person and and spend some time with you. But thank you for all that you've given us, and we appreciate that more than you'll ever know. My name is Scott Howell, and you are listening to the Insurance Guys Podcast. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Insurance Guys podcast. If you need to know more about me or you need to get in touch with Scott, you can always reach me at theinsuranceguyonline.com or email me at iprotectins at gmail.com. And if you need to get in touch with Mr. Bradley Flowers, go to bradleyflowersinsurance.com or email him at bradley at saralandinsurance.com. 
Guys, we love you. Thank you so much for listening. We look forward to being with you again real soon on the next episode of The Insurance Guys. Take care.